What's going on, guys? Brian's here. It's Wednesday. This is almost the end of the morning session. The S&P 500 has been choppy, and I'm going to be closing out some trades here, but I figured I might as well hop on pretty quickly and just show you guys why I opened something like the 0DT Iron Condor, as well as a swing trade in which I opened. So this is the 0DT Iron Condor. Like I said, I'm going to be closing this out now. And then this is a swing trade in which I opened up yesterday here. It's a double calendar for next week expiration. It's doing pretty well. And then a zero DTE out of the money broken wing XSP butterfly, mostly because of the profile that I saw here once the market opened regarding the expected move, as well as some of the gamma exposure and just understanding some technical analysis and the expectation I've come to learn whenever the market is hovering around these quant trading app zones here. Link is in the description of quant trading app. That's where these levels are from that is where the gamma exposure profile is from as well as this spx trade engine which we'll be getting to in a few minutes and some other data points once the markets closed yesterday i came in today already knowing i was going to run some sort of non-directional trade the only thing that sucks is that implied volatility is not really high relative to how it's been over the past few weeks so that means the iron condor i didn't really get that much premium so I made it much more narrow that you would than you would normally see how someone would sell an iron condor, which is why I knew I wanted to open this trade really early. I generally don't like to open up non-directional trades this early in the morning. This is only eight minutes after the market opened today. I decided to open up this iron condor. I use 6120 as the short strike for the call side and 6085 as the short strike for the put side. Because a few minutes after the market opened, I let the SPX trade engine and quant trading app just generate this right here. And this is adding glance an overview to essentially most of the quintessential information that a zero dt spx trader would need to know and what i see right here is this was the expected move for the day from the open and this was the expected move from the open to the downside so 6085 and 6123 this is the iron condor here. So 6085 and 6123. So you guys can see the break even right here. It's around the range of what is to be the expected move from the open. This was generated five minutes after the market opened. This is a very narrow range. As we can see, the expected move is only about 20 points up or down. And on days like this, you're not going to get that much premium relative to if we scroll back to a previous day. Say for example, yesterday wasn't really that volatile either. It was 21, about 22 points. If it's going to be a day, in which it's expected to be very volatile the system will print out something that says aa after this this is also not a day that is above average but aa just stands for above average and it just means it is an above average expected move from the open so since today was not an above average you know expected day this is a very small expected move i like whenever the expected move drops significantly so over the past few days it has been hovering around maybe 20 20 something points or so and the first day that it is a low expected move that's when i'm generally going to be interested in running some sort of iron condor relatively early in the trading session because that usually happens after the market has already made a couple decent big moves on that third day i tend to be more biased regarding consolidation you generally don't want to be aggressive as a directional trader after the market has made a large move on top of that 15 minutes after the market opens this is what the gamma exposure profile looked like so 6100 as we know is a dominant strike i actually went over that i believe in the video i published last night but i see this right here and this is where the absolute gex was at the start of the day there's a lot of call volume happening so that's what the blue is showing there's a lot of volume here there's a lot of interest in this 6120 strike but because this is a speculative out of the money type of play i decided to run with the xsp not putting that much risk on the trade the target on that trade is essentially this right here which is 6120 but this is where as i mentioned yesterday context is important i'm targeting up here but i'm expecting the markets to be relatively choppy around this range now what's working against me in terms of price getting up to 6120 that i'm aware of from this point in time is the fact that from the volume profile we are at the top of the es's volume profile for the week so this is what's referred to as the value area high it's going to be difficult for the markets to climb higher after it just made this large move there's a lot of price action and activity happening around here the market is spending a lot of time around here and it is building up a massive zone here so this could end up becoming a supply zone that will cause the market to drop all the way back down here at this point in time we don't know it's likely that the market also wants to come back down to 605 
that's something to be aware of. There wasn't a lot of positive gamma above 610 at the start of the week. On top of that, 608 is an important gamma exposure strike. Let me actually just close out my SPX position before I forget, as I have a habit of actually forgetting while I'm in the middle of uh, doing these videos. Okay, the position just closed. This is the uh, new profile. Let's just uncheck everything. As you guys can see, I'm in zero lots here. So the position for next week, I don't have to worry so much about. Obviously, this is for next week, Friday. This is the double calendar that I will get into in a second. But why is 608 an important level for the SPY? It's because at the start of the week, as you guys know, I like to run this gamma exposure profile, combining the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday expirations for the week, and then coming up with a game plan for myself. This right here is 608. Now, I didn't mark it out on my charts. There's a reason within QTA, as you guys uh, know here in my notes, I shared the profile, so not only do I share the levels at the start of the week, but essentially a loose game plan for how I'm going to approach the week or how a trader might consider approaching the week. But then I also make sure to share this uh, profile here so you guys can save it for your notes in your own journal. And this you guys can see right here is 608 at the start of the week. So this is a, a timestamp or a uh, snapshot here of exactly when this profile was generated, but that information is also accessible here. So this is about an hour after the market opened this week. We can see that 608 was an important strike. I just put 610 because I didn't want too many levels on my charts, but earlier on Monday when the market was around 597, 608 was a level to be aware of. Now that we are at 608, it's not going to be surprising that the market is going to struggle at this level. On top of that, we have the quant trading app weekly sell zone as well as the weekly resistance we have the value area high we have a lot of things going against price right now at this area but i'm not quick to flip the script and just become overtly bearish as the expectation is consolidation bulls might make a slight attempt for price to go higher and that's why i'm going to use something like the x SP, which has much less risk associated with it but my main conviction will be with the spx now, yesterday, just before noon, I decided to run this double calendar for next week. I wanted something that was long volatility in, 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 case, in case IV did increase. I wanted something that was positive theta as I'm expecting the markets to be choppy in this region. And I wanted something with a little bit positive delta because this trade was opened right around here at that 6085 level that I discussed in yesterday's video. So let me just actually pop this up here. This is that 608085 area right here in which we were expecting some sort of resistance. But you guys know my main target was 6100. So the so so the thought process was the market would go higher and then we would consolidate around 6100. I wanted a nice large range to cover price action and i was just expecting it to go there for today possibly into thursday i'll decide if i want to hold that trade into tomorrow or not as it's doing pretty well right now as you guys can see i'm not using a massive amount of capital i'm not exposing myself to too much risk if i hold this trade until friday there's an opportunity to make a lot more and then obviously if you hold it into next week there's an opportunity to make a lot more but i don't know if i want that type of risk as the longer you hold these types of double calendars this is not exactly what the p l is going to look like the iv for next week friday is going to increase and that's actually going to decrease the profits for this trade as so these are just way to bring in pnl relatively stress-free as they're not massive sizes on top of that we have this right here this this is the spies previous days option volume range so during yesterday's trading session this is essentially what the range is that the majority of spy options were traded around the markets generally does not trade outside of this range especially on a day after it broke out of that range so this is yesterday's range we can see the market gapped up and then it trended up all day so now that it is today the expectation is that it's less likely to continue going higher outside of this range. So this area is where I would expect it to struggle, which is also that 608 strike as we can see right here. That is the previous day's volume range. So that's why I'm not gonna hold my breath for expecting it to go much higher. Today's volume range as we can see is now at 609 down to 607. So today's range is currently right here. So there is a possibility that it goes higher. This area is, a this area would be expected to be support. It refreshes automatically every few minutes. Every time you refresh the page, obviously it will, it will completely reanalyze this data and plot it on the chart. But right now it's on an auto timer. So every five minutes, it's, it's gonna refresh itself, join the new five minute candle, as well as update any of these levels in real time.
now that I'm out of the zero DT iron condor, I'm going to take, I'm going to wait to see if there's any other confluence. If we get back down to this key area from yesterday here to see if I'm going to take a long trade back up to here, I am considering running some sort of put diagonal spread for this week. Since I don't have a lot of exposure out right now, my uh, profile is relatively light considering the type of trades I would normally run. In other words, I don't have that much risk out. So I'm considering something like this. I don't want too much risk to the downside. Something for this week here, just to pull in a little bit extra PL. It'll actually be more like this to close out the week. In other words, a structure like this is relatively nice. If the market does have some sort of major, you know, 1% down day or so and implied volatility spikes, I do want some sort of exposure to that. However, if we go higher, I don't want to be burned too much using 6,100 as my level to risk off of. And then obviously, if we just consolidate for another day or so, I would love the opportunity to bring in more PL. But for hedging my portfolio overall right now, I have a put ratio backspread running for next week that was opened up yesterday. This just allows me to pretty much just, you know, sleep well at night as I leave some of these uh, bigger overnight swings running here. So if the market did have some sort of massive, you know, 3% down day, I have protection to the downside. If the market just consolidates for a bit, it's just going to be a slow decline in PL on a spread like this. This is just protection for this week. So it allows me to run these swing trades overnight without fear of the markets completely uh crashing and this is just being smart at the fact that we are at all-time highs there's tensions in the middle east the market is generally a lot more volatile when, once trump is the president and obviously anything can happen at any given point so these type of ratio spreads can ease a lot of anxiety but for the most part this video is just around the context of why a trader would consider you know, running a non-directional trade relatively early in the session. What type of days is it expected for the markets to be choppy? Using using a gamma exposure profile like this that looks relatively split, we see that there's a high gamma node here at 6100. We see that there is some interest down here. We see some interest right here. It's kind of like a tug of war. Both of these sides could be pulling on price at the same time. It might just want to stay within this range, but not passing up on the opportunity for a lotto later in the day if we do go up to there. The power strike for Quant Trading App is letting us know that 6100 is where it's currently expecting the markets to be during power hour. This is dynamic, so it will move depending on what's going on throughout the day. But for the now, there isn't much of a reason to think the market is going to close relatively far from 6100. We're almost coming down to the expected move from the open. So 6086, if the market gets down here, I'm going to look to see what's going to happen with price action. If a hammer candle is going to form, this could be a sign that aggressive buyers are present and I might want to join them in the speculation that the market is going to bounce back up to 6100. That could be a 15 point scalp or so for that trade. I might just buy the MES, which is the futures, or I might just buy some out of the money uh, calls, or I might trade some sort of a out of the money broken wing long call butterfly like the XSP, but we'll run it on the SPX to have a little bit to be a little bit more aggressive to bring in more PL for the day. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching. Link is in the description to previous videos. It's rare, it's rare that I do a video this early in the day as I actively have positions open that I need to be focused on. But because my profile was so light today, I don't have that much risk out. I don't really, I'm not really too concerned with what the market's going to do. I figured I might as well uh, come on here and share a quick video. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe, like the video, leave a comment down below if you learned something, and I'll catch you in the next one.